Hi everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this video, I'm going to show you how I made this two-toned textured buttercream cake. I also made some rice paper fans and a combination of some dried flowers and some artificial flowers that I had. So if this sounds like something you'd like to see, please stick around and we'll get right to it after the intro. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put some tape that's rolled up on my display board. And on this already filled and crumb coated cake, I am just cutting down the excess board that I don't need. Just use your scissors and do that. And then I have this dusty blue buttercream in a piping bag that I just cut the tip off and I just drew a line, an irregular line where I wanted there to be the difference between the, the blue and the white and filled it in and I'm using my plastic scraper to smooth it out. Now if you notice the spot that you don't like the shape of the where the line's going to be just go ahead and fill in a little bit more. Pop it in the fridge and let it set up for about 20 minutes or in the freezer for 10 minutes and then go in with your second color. It doesn't have to be blue and white that's just what I wanted to do this time and fill in the top section. Now the reason I go ahead and, and chill it is that that way when you scrape the second color down you're not blending it into the blue. It has a firm line there. And then I'm filling in the top and smoothing that down with my offset spatula. Now pull up those sides and then bring that lip into the middle if you want to or leave it rough like I did. I just went ahead and used my spatula and I did a spiral pattern in the top just for a little something different. And then I'm just using some, I had popped it in the fridge again to firm up. And since I had done that, it was no longer damped, not damp, but um, it's crusted over is what I'm trying to say. So to get my sprinkles to stick, I just use a little piping gel right along that, that joint, that line. And these are the sprinkles that I wanted to use. I thought this was just a really pretty mix. I suppose you could use this for like, um, mermaid style cake also, but I like the combination of the purple and the blue. I thought it was just really pretty. So I'm, the trick to getting this to onto the cake is since it is crusted over, yes, you start with your piping gel, but to get the crystals, the sugar crystals onto the cake, I just dip my finger in water, dip it into the sprinkles and they stick to your finger. And then when you put it onto the cake, it sticks to the cake, just like magic. So much more simple than it looks like it is. This cake is actually a fairly simple cake. I say fairly simple. I know I do it all the time, but really there's not a whole lot to this cake. And make sure that you clean off your board if you are building your cake on your display board. I just used a damp towel. Now I set it in the refrigerator to firm up again. And now I'm going in with the same blue that I used on the bottom. I'm just using a pastry brush, dipping it in the buttercream as it is. You don't need to thin it down or anything. And just kind of stippling it onto your cake. It's really just that simple. This is a really random pattern. You could do this on the top also if you wanted to, but I like the different textures that we're going on with the, the um, textured buttercream on the bottom, your crystals in the middle, and then a smooth top. And also since that top is not pulled into the center, you have that more rough edge to it. I thought it blended in your texture on the bottom with texture on the top, just two different kinds of texture.
and clean off that board again and stick it back in the refrigerator to firm up. Now in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and make my fans on this rice paper. Now I just used a pencil. Yes, uh, it's pencil. It's not lead. People mistake um, graphite and lead. Lead is poisonous, graphite is not. But what you are doing is actually you're marking out where you wanna cut your pattern and cut that line off anyway. So you don't even, it's not even there anymore. And I just kind of sketched a rough shape. You don't even need to do this. It's kind of um, a leaf shape. You don't even need to do that if you are pretty good with eyeballing. I'm not. <laughs> so I like to have some guidelines. Now just with your rice paper, when you're folding it, be gentle with it. Like don't fold it really crisp right away. Like kind of coax it into it. Bend it a little bit and then push it down gradually. I think you can see how I'm doing that pretty well there. And just do your fan pattern. Just like when you're in grade school and you made paper fans, same idea. And then do the same to the other side. And spread the fan out a little bit and pull it together on the end. I'm cutting off that extra piece, putting a little water on a dowel rod. The water is what's going to, actually it's like a bamboo skewer, I guess is what you would call it. But the water is what's gonna get it to stick. You don't wanna use a whole lot of water because water will melt the rice paper, just enough to get it to get sticky and stick to, stick to itself. And it will hold the skewer in there at the same time. I just did it a variety of sizes. I always like to have more than I need. And I'm just using these dried reeds, I guess they are. Gather them into a cluster, or kind of pull out the ends where you want them to get, so they're not just straight across the top, if that's not the look you want. And I'm just using some floral wire to wrap the ends so that that would make it food safe. I'm using one of my, um, fondant tools it's just basically a stick to poke a hole in the buttercream and then stick the reeds I'm just calling them reeds I'm not sure what they actually are <laughs> into the cake I did two bunches of those and then I'm just gonna add the fans and the floral just I just don't have a game plan I just kind of have a general idea of what I wanted and I just went with it. Add one thing at a time, see how it looks. If it doesn't look right, take it out, stick it back in somewhere else. Since that whole area is gonna be covered, you're not gonna see where you've poked holes and pulled things out. So don't worry too much about that. If you are worried, just go ahead and fill them in with a little buttercream. I like the how the flowers on this cake with the, the purpley blue, the cornflowerish color and the blue, go along with the sprinkles and the cornflower blue on the bottom. And then the off-white flowers just kind of added a little different, softer, um, neutral color. And I went with a lot of different textures on this one. Then there's those little, I wish, I don't know what they're called, kind of fuzzy, longer, dried flowers. A lot of texture, a lot of different textures going on on this cake, which I think make it look very interesting. And then I'm just using a French tip and then a round tip and piping just some extra little detail. I did want to do some meringues, but you know what? I ran out of time. So I'm just kind of getting um, the same basic idea with buttercream and a piping bag instead. They're smaller, yes, but I was gonna do smaller meringues anyway, so that works out. And then I did some along the bottom to kind of make it cohesive, kind of catty corner. Yeah, as you can tell, if you see my videos very often, you can see, I know that I like that catty corner angled off to the side look. And I just put a little um, powdered sugar on my fingertip to tap down those peaks. I didn't want them to stick out. I wanted more circles. That's a little trick right there. You don't have to wait for it to crust over to do that. Just put some, you can even use corn flour or powdered sugar on your fingertip.
All right, guys, so there's the final product. My two-tone textured buttercream cake. So if you would take the time to like and share and comment, I would appreciate it. And hit the notification bell. Catch you next time. Bye.